would have ever known that God was this wise except we have lived to understand the awesomeness of who we are serving. I mean, he's not. Good morning and welcome to Morning Man. His thoughts are not malfunctioned. We pray that God has blessed you, kept you. God. Uh, he is timely in every perspective of his word. His foretelling is quite precise. He's made no error in prophecy. He is absolutely right on. He's made no error. He has not made a mistake. He's not a bumbling idiot. He, he is older than time itself. Could you imagine the magnitude of this kind of God that we serve? Have you understood that our God is beyond our vocabulary? We are absolutely lost for words. I mean, he is mentally breathtaking. When you think about God, he has a tendency to allow your mind to just hang in abeyance. You don't know what to think about him because he's beyond the fathoming of your heart. So you just end up being awed. Awed in wonder. Have you ever understood the magnitude or even in our little infinitesimal minds to try to fathom out a little about God? Can you imagine someone who does not have a body but is eternal and timeless? Time is nothing more than a cylinder that's locked in eternality. Just a little space that has alpha and omega written on it. And everything in between is generation after generation. And that's where we get the chronicler telling us and he begot, and he begot, and he begot. But God stands inside time yet regulating time. Time is not a governor of God, but God created time as his master. He utilizes time for us so that we can understand when we were born and when we shall die. So that we can remember birthdays and celebrations. So that we could call to remembrance. God doesn't need a clock. God doesn't need a Timex to keep on ticking. God doesn't even need a calendar of events. Can you just imagine someone that has the mind power enough to remember everybody that was ever created? Can you imagine someone that doesn't need a computer and then keep up dating the computer so that he can keep track of his world. No, he doesn't move from chronoseconds to milliseconds. God is just God. The fathoming of the thinking mind of God befuddles us because he knows the ant by name and the blade of grass that just perished. And he understands the beast that moves through the waters. And he knows everyone who's entered into the grave. And he's so meticulous until he knows the number of each hair upon everyone's head. Can you imagine with just five billion people in this generation on, on this earthly planet at this particular span of time that God knows each and every one by name and knows how many hairs it's on your head, what your death appointment is going to be, how you will enter into that death appointment, what is your birthday, your height, weight, shape, and color. Can you imagine a God that understands everything there is to understand about you? Just not the physical loss, but God knows your emotional problems. He knows what Patty did that he should not. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Morning Manor, amen, on this Tuesday. It is June 28th, amen, to God be the glory for all the things that he has done, amen, as we have opened up in prayer, the one and only, hallelujah, Iona Locke, amen, the late, great Iona Locke, we thank God for her life, her ministry, her sacrifice, the things she has done, and that's one of the prayers, if you ever get a chance to go back on YouTube, there is a video uh, that goes under called, Let's Get It On, Let's Get It On, and that was actually the introduction, and that's not even the whole introduction, that is part of the introduction of that message as she prays, amen, such a powerful and important prayer, amen, and um, it just always blessed my heart, and I want to share it, make it part of our intro as we come in to remind us of how God wants to be close to us, how God desired to be close to us, now it's up to us to take on the rest of it, it's up to us to move towards God, amen, we thank, that's right, Cousin Pam, we thank God, Mother Pat, Mother Pat, how are you, how are you, it was really on my heart on the other day, amen, amen, we gotta connect, amen, catch up, amen, amen, Good morning, Sister Divinity. Good morning, uh, Sister Karen. Good morning, good morning, Sister Tammy, Deacon Gail, Cousin Pam. Amen, Sister Jackie. God bless you all. Amen, Sister Rosalind. We thank God for you guys who joined us this morning on Morning Manor. Amen. On Morning Manor, I pray that everyone had a blessed weekend, a wonderful weekend. Uh, it's been very busy. Amen. Some good stuff. Amen. <laughs> I had to have some coffee this morning. Amen. I had to have some coffee. Amen. Remind me, Jesus say, bro. Yeah, Jesus say. Good morning, Brother James. Amen. Amen. Uh, we had such a wonderful, wonderful, incredible time on this past Sunday. <clears throat> uh, we had our uh, bilingual service, which was wow. That's all I could say. <laughs> I could say was wow. It was such a beautiful, beautiful spirit uh, on Sunday. It was such a beautiful spirit on Sunday uh, that we had such a marvelous time in the Lord. Amen. And um, it was tremendous. It was tremendous. Pastor Soto and Christian Life Center Church, who she had the same building with us, uh, they were they were incredible. Uh, it, was such, it was so fluid. It was so funny because you could tell in the beginning, everybody was kind of like, but we, we, we just met them maybe a few months ago when they started coming to the building, being part of the, and sharing the same building as us. And when you understand ministry, when you understand ministry, amen, and what it's really, really about, amen, God allows us all to have our part. And we just fluently came together and just had a wonderful time of the Lord. Then we had the carnival. The carnival, the carnival was great. I, my most enjoyable part was those kids. They had a great, great time. It was so important. And I'm going to share with the church in more detail later, um, Dr. Nakia, um, that yet that Sunday was important because you got to remember, even though we are sort of out of the pandemic, we're still regathering. We're still regathering. There was some still a lot of still some lot of loose pieces that still need to be brought in closer. That we kind of you know not say we, but things got out of whack a little bit. So I think Sunday allowed not just for us but for Pastor Soto and his church as well to kind of get people kind of feel more comfortable coming back. And then it was important that we fellowship and we came together and, and especially for the kids, especially for the kids, you know, finding out I went to church and I had fun. We, we, we had a carnival. We, we ate, we had funnel cakes and we ate hot dogs and pizza. Boy, did we eat. We ate on Sunday. We ate on Sunday. Great food, amazing staff as we transitioned from service right into the carnival in the same location. Amen. We asked them to step out for a second. Amen. They did what they had to do. The God came and set everything up. But it was great, great celebration. And and Mother Pat, that's what it was. It was a celebration. Anytime you get two first ladies to do the, I don't know, the cha-cha hustle or whatever it's called, <laughs> doing that, it was a celebration. It was a celebration of life, a celebration of survival, celebration. It was really, 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 really an amazing thing. And um uh, Pastor Moody, uh, as you know, you know, it may not have been the way we've always done things, but we have to find good, safe environments for our people to come together. Amen. To, to come together and get to know one another in a different light. Because we you know we fellowship, we fellowship. And I remember saying this to Bishop Senior years ago. And we used to have our fifth Sunday fellowship with the New York church. And I said, you know, we come together, we fellowship, we have service together. But we really don't get to know each other. And sometimes you have to take, you know, we yeah, we worship God. We're gonna worship God together, and that's wonderful. So we should be together in that. But I need to know my brother, I need to know my sister on a more 
intimate way, amen, a more intimate way, get to know what's your, your background, because any of you ever meet me, you know, um, I'm going to ask you, what do you do for a living, uh, this and another, and it's because I want to know your world, you know, how things affect you and how you look at things, so, yes, it was magnificent, it was, it was incredible, it was great, and we have to take those times to enjoy one another, then last night, I enjoyed my gift from the church, from the church for Father's Day, oh my God, they blessed me real good. I'm a Yankee fan, been a Yankee fan forever, amen, and they have an incredible season, Brother Greg, and they, got, they didn't just give me tickets, they got me some good tickets, real good tickets, and I kind of knew about this other part of the world, <laughs> but I got to taste it, amen, and Brother Derek says something, uh, he reminded me of something I said to him years ago, maybe, I don't know how many years ago, uh, he was going through a rough patch. And I remember at his job, his job's always giving away great prizes, TVs and trips. And, you know, it's just a wonderful job he has. He's like, pass, I got a business trip. We got to go to L.A. Stadium. I was like, come on, I get it because of the type of businesses. Um, so it was many years ago and he was going through, I remember it was really a financial crush. It was really, it was really tight for him. And he won these tickets. And he's wanting to take the tickets was expensive. There was a there was up there. And he said, What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm, he said he had planned to sell the tickets. He said, I'm gonna sell the tickets and I'm just gonna pay off a few bills. I can pay off a few bills with the cost of these tickets. Amen. So what ended up happening, he said he's walking down the hallway and he sees his boss, boss, who he said he never sees. He never sees this guy. And he said, ran to the guy and he said, Hey, I understand you won my tickets. <laughs> Because <laughs> these seats are usually reserved for those who are doing pretty well for themselves. Amen. Um, and he said, yeah, he said, enjoy the game. And Derek said, I'm not really a baseball fan. He said, but then I had to go because if I didn't go and I seen this guy and I sold the tickets, that may not be a good look. So he ended up going and had a great time. And, and then he got to taste being in this suite, this, this area of the park. Amen. And, and the baseball game. And he was telling us about it. Now, he, when he's describing it to me, I have in my mind what I think that may look like. Let me bring this down. What that may look like. Amen. So then yesterday when we got the tickets, we got there. First of all, we couldn't find the tickets on my phone. That was a whole nother adventure. So we went there on faith saying, I'm going to go to the box office. I'm going to say, listen, this is my name. This is who I am. I need my tickets. And they did work out. It was a blessing, me and First Lady. Good morning, Mother Foxworth. How are you? God bless you. And we got there, got the tickets. So we go in. And it's like you walk into a restaurant. You walk into a restaurant and I'm thinking, I said, okay, well, that's cool. We could get to eat before we go. It's like, okay, well, it doesn't matter. You know, they pay for the tickets. We get all inclusive, all inclusive. And when I tell you, I don't eat meat. I don't eat seafood. Amen. I don't eat any of that. But let me tell you something. And your first lady don't eat like that either. It was a lot of food. It was stacks of steaks. It was tubs of seafood and, and it was all inclusive. It was wonderful. This was, this was like an hour and a half before the game. So you got to sit, you got to eat, then you went down to the field. We had incredible seats right on the field. It was magnificent. It was really, really, really wonderful. I turned to First Lady. I said, you know we can't go back after this. <laughs> she's not a baseball fan, but like she said, she's a fan to the fan. So she came along. She had a great time. You know, it took a million and a half pitches. Amen. Um, but it was magnificent. We had a really, really good time. We had some Nice people sitting next to us. Uh, people treated you really well. So, yeah, I, I was tired. I got home. I said we leaving after the first of the sixth, then we left after the seventh inning. Um, because I know how traffic would be. And New York, as crazy it is, uh, 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 Mother Fox, or I, I, I thought about going where we used to do the tri-state meet and stuff like that. Because you know there's always, <laughs> there's always construction going on in New York. And we looped around. The GPS was taking us the wrong way a couple of times. You tired already. Amen. So we finally, we make it home. We make it home. This is this, this that life of, of the past, the Odoms. Amen. We get home and as we pull it up down our thing to get to the house, I said, you know, we forgot your car at Garden State. <laughs> so yes, came home, walked in, just checked things real quick, got back in the car, went back to Garden State. It's about quarter to 11 at this time. Go get our car and we come back. And here we are this morning, amen. And morning, man, and thank you guys for joining us, amen. There's always an adventure in the life of, uh, of the Odoms, amen. You're right, Sister Dr. McKee, you can't unsee what you saw. And, and, and this is what Brother Derek encouraged me. And when he went and I told him, I said, 
God just wanted to give you a preview of where he was taking you, where he was taking you. And then when he presented the tickets to me, he said the same thing to me. He said, Pastor, this is just a preview of where God is taking you. So it was, uh, <laughs> so it was, it was, a, it was a great, 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 great time, great time, great game. We won the game, so that's important as well. But thank you for joining us this morning on Morning Manor. And again, as we pray for one another, it's so so important. And and you know, people are still going through because life happens. Life happens, and you know, we have to keep encouraging each other. We got to keep building each other up. It's not the time uh, for whatever reason. To tear people down we know we can have an opinion we can have a feeling about certain things but we have to be very careful especially us as believers amen especially as believers we have to build each other up again i was talking to a young man i said listen you don't have to agree with people and i said one thing i've learned in my walk with christ amen even when it comes to leadership and things of that nature sometimes even as an individual it could be a little challenging because of personalities that sometimes honors people you know, um, sometimes you just clash. You have a clash in personality. They may be abrasive. They may be too timid. And it does it goes against what you believe. But one thing I say, you always honor and respect the office. You honor and respect the office. You may not agree with a lot of things. And one thing I told him, I said, listen, it's better for you to separate yourself from the situation and put your mouth on the man or woman of God and get yourself in trouble. And I reminded him, I said, go look in your Bible. Look at Aaron and Miriam. Right? Look at Aaron and Miriam. They had an opinion about how Moses was moving and what he was doing. He said, you know, we can do what Moses, and that's what happens. We feel as though if we were in this situation, we could we could handle it differently. It's always easy to from the sideline to be a Monday night quarterback after the fact. But when it comes to um, serving in God's kingdom, especially in leadership and in, in, as a pastor, um, it's not an easy thing. Now, I love being a pastor. I love I love helping people. That's what it's about. It's not about the position. It's about, and I call it opportunity, whether I'm in the pulpit or on the streets. Amen. God gives me opportunities to share with someone the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we talked about on Sunday, on Sunday, it's one, one, one nation under God. It's one nation under God. You guys are from different locations, different churches, and sometimes what we call reformations and denominations. At the end of the day, God ain't coming looking for no denomination. He ain't coming looking for no reformation. He ain't coming looking for no missionaries. He's not coming looking for no bishops. He's not coming for any of those things. He's coming for your soul. Amen. So when it comes to being one nation under God, amen, it's not the United States of America. It's all of those who accept and come under the guidance and leadership of the true king. That's that's the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's 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 going to be the difference. Amen. So that's that got caught up in political stuff like the world. And we do even in the church world. And even as a young man grew up in Newark, one of the things I never I never liked was politics. I just, you know, and I understand the necessities of politicians and I understand the uh, necessity of government. I understand that uh, clearly. I get it why they have governing things. But you also must realize that the people that are governing is the heart and the agenda behind why they govern the way they govern. Amen. That's why you have to be careful. Even whose side you say you on. My mama was one. My grandfather was one. But you have to look at the agenda. So you got to look at the heart. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, it's about us coming together. Again, here we are on this singular platform. This platform, uh, Morning Manor, you want to call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we're under, we're united. We're united under God right now. And that's what it's really about. That's where the strengths come in. And that's what we have to demonstrate. So today, as we continue in talking about when God's people pray, when God's people pray, prayer is so, so important. Prayer is not just for the mothers. It's not just for the deacons, not for the older seasoned saints. It's for all of us. And and as I think about it, and um, when you get your prayer life together, now, and when I see people, let's be honest, let's be transparent. Amen. When I see people in trouble in Christ, in trouble in Christ, you didn't got yourself all bound up. <laughs> you got yourself in a situation because what happens is we feel as though sometimes we get away with stuff. But what happens is our emotions, when they're not connected to God, we were talking about emotionally spirituality. When that, when you're not emotionally healthy in the things of God and you're not connected to God, your emotions will make you make decisions and choices that 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 don't always benefit you. They don't always benefit you. You get yourself in trouble. You'll find yourself making decisions and choices based on 
based on those situations. And, and then we're in trouble because we're not praying. Because if you're praying, we wouldn't find ourselves there. Now you could pray and struggle. Let me say that. You could be praying, but yet you're struggling, but you won't be overtaken. You could be praying and then struggle. Somebody say, amen. You could be struggling and you're praying, but you won't be overtaken. And usually the person that knows that you're struggling is you and God. Maybe some of your close friends that know that, like, you know, it's hard. It's it's not easy, but you got to keep praying. You got to keep praying. It's almost like you have a, a life preserver, right? You're in the water. You can't swim. You can't swim. Well, you can't swim or are you overwhelmed or something has happened. I've gotten myself in this situation. Amen. Because you will get tricked. You will be tempted. Amen. And depending on your emotional state of mind, let me tell you something, how your emotions is a very powerful thing. You know, a lot of times, you know, brothers will say, well, the women are emotional. No, we all are very emotional beings. You think about a Mother Johnson, when you talk about the soul of an individual, right? We're talking about the mind. We're talking about the will. And your mind can go back and forth with your heart and your desires and things like that. You're talking about your will, that's where your power and your strength that determines the decisions that you make. But those emotions, in, in, in all of those things, if the emotion is connected to the wrong source, it affects your will and it affects your mind. And, and, and you know I'm telling the truth, right? When your emotions are, are not what they're supposed to be. We can always be emotional because, you know, even God is talking about when they describe God, talking about his heart, his happy and his joy and all those things. Those are all part of emotions that, that, that makes your, your mind go a certain way. They bring pleasure or it can make you sad. Think about it. If you think about certain things, amen, or you get reminded by certain things, all of a sudden your whole mood change. I, I, I really, I really love music. I really, 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 really love music. And, 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 and music has set the tone for a lot of things in your life. Music has set the tone for a lot of things in your life. So as you listen to theme music and things like that, it can make you happy. It can make you smile. It can make you depressed. And that's your mind. Now your emotions are now changed. So we have to be very careful because your emotions are getting you in trouble. That's why when it comes to loving someone, that's when it comes to being in relationships, you have to be very careful of giving of yourself because now you're making choices and decisions, amen, based on emotions only. And here's the thing, when, when, when your emotions are just tied to your flesh, when it just tied to your flesh, amen, your flesh like, listen, we need this. We have to have this. We can't talk about a person we see on the street that's addicted to a drug, that's addicted to alcohol. It's driving them because chemically their bodies are desiring things. What do you think it is when it comes to love and relationships? There's a chemical thing that wants to be fed, even when it comes to eating, right? Even when it comes to eating, you think about your favorite move that we call comfort food, right? You said, you know what, if I have a piece of this chocolate cake, listen, if I want to Give <laughs> some comfort food. I'm going to tell you the comfort food. It comes from Aunt Dot. She makes this pound cake. You know, that got to be like somewhere up there. Like that pound cake is, it, I, I can't, I'm like, just bring me a slice. And she's going to bring me the whole thing. That's something that's like, you'll say, you know, if I had that pound cake, I'll be all right. If I, Brother James, if I had that, that ice cream, that butter pecan ice cream, whatever one you eat, it's like, I'll be all right. It's a comfort food. So you're satisfying a part of your emotional food. We have to be very careful. So sometimes, sometimes what happens is, we as believers, as brothers and sisters of Christ, don't always have the strength. And I'm not going to say <laughs> or from, anything from our dot kitchen. <laughs> right, Sister Joe? Anything from our kitchen. Amen. Anything from that kitchen. Amen. That's, that's a comfort food. Um, we have to be there for one another. And, and we can't be, we can't judge one another. And what I mean by that, I mean, hold each other accountable. You hear me say this. Hold each other accountable. Listen, check in. You know, what's going on, bro? What's going on, sis? I see you moving kind of funny. I saw you got angry in that conversation. And I mean, you got out of character. You know, we got to hold each other accountable. And it may not be your job. It may not be your job to get to the root of the problem. But sometimes we got to address the problem. We can't just let stuff slide if I say I really love you and I care about you. Now, if they fire back and say, you know what? Mind your business. You've done your part. You've done your part. You know, and, and you you know, you get to know, like, it's not a good place right now. And you're going to have some people when you are defensive. And you're defensive because you feel some kind of way. 
But this is why we have to approach one another in love. We have to approach each other in love. We got to approach each other in a non-judgment spirit. Because you know, this is why I say it's a non-judgment spirit. This is why I say a non-judgment spirit. Because the Bible tells us that anyway. Because you don't know the essence or the root cause of the behavior of the individual. We look at it and we say, oh, see, you know what? They're a mess. They're terrible. He says, them young people. You know what? Those brothers. You know what? Them sisters. That that That's really, and we, we are judging. And when you really have a conversation, that's why. That's why. I, I, I I'll talk to people. And I, when I speak with you, I'm going to speak with you from a perspective of kind of getting out how you process, how you, how you think. Because when you have perceptions and you have process, because he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. And there got to be a changing of the mind. Got to be a changing of the guard. Amen. Who we let in and who we don't let in. Our gates, our ear gates, our eye gates, our mouth gates, all those things. I got to guard the gates because what I see and allow in, right? You see those, 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 those soldiers standing at Buckingham um, Palace. Amen. They stand there. And you're not, they're not going to flinch. When we're praying, we guard in our mind. He said, guard your mind with all diligence. Guard your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your, what you allow in your heart. Listen, your emotions. Then people could tell, you know, he was like, hey, how you been? What, what you heard? What you heard? What you heard? Now, you all defensive and all nervous and all, you know, because we, we slip. But then instead of us. Coming to someone and said, listen, um, I'm going through some things. I'm really, really, really strong. And 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 the enemy make it secrets. He wants you to keep it a secret. We're gonna keep it amongst us. But I need people praying for me. I need somebody praying for me. Amen. I, I thank God I have some friends, um, people that pray for me. Not because I'm a pastor, just because I'm a person. Amen. I just say right here, I need you to pray for me. Just, just say, you ain't got to go into what it is. Not me, but these people on this line. I don't, I don't know how many people we have right now. We got about 27 people on here. There's about 26 other people that can pray for you. There's about 26 other people to pray. God, open my eyes to what I cannot see. And, and, and here's the truth of Jesus. Your title don't matter. Your title don't matter. When Moses, when the children of Israel was going to battle, when they were in battle, they was winning. They was winning. As long as Moses had that staff up, mother, he had that staff up, they would win. Amen. Because they was reminders, look at this staff. This is reminders, God is leading us right now. God is leading us. And that's what you got to remind me of. Remind Brother John, John Brother, Sister, Sister Joan. Remind, look at God. Look to God, which coming for your help. Amen. And keep on. And, but then when Moses would get tired, his arms would get tired because even though I have a spiritual and a godly assignment, amen, I'm still trying to do it through this. Amen. And what happens is uh, it was Aaron and her, H-U-R, that would hold up his hand when he got tired and place it on a rock to hold up his hand. You got to lift your leaders in, in prayer. You got to lift each other in prayer. Amen. Amen. You ain't got to know what's going on all the time. And if you got someone you trust, you trust enough. And please do this. Y'all got some prayer partners, but y'all got some flesh partners too. Let me take a sip of coffee on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got some co-signers. You got some people that would co-sign. Don't worry, I'll co-sign you. I get it. I understand. Girl, you know what? You deserve that. You deserve that? Really? Really? That I deserve it? Yeah. You know, treat yourself. You know, he, he, he didn't treat you the right way. He She didn't treat you the right way. You should... Lean into the flesh? No. I can say, I do understand. And don't be one of those people that says, that don't make no kind of sense. I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe. Now, you may be hurt. You may be shocked. Amen. Um, and disappointed. Let me use that one. Let's leave with disappointment. You may be disappointed. You may be hurt. You may be shocked. Amen. But shake yourself. It's just like, I believe this. I don't know if y'all believe this, but I believe this. And ever, or ever save the souls of your children. Amen. They may do something, I don't care how old they are, that you don't agree with. You don't like it. You know that it's going to be counterproductive to their lives or detrimental to their lives. But you see that they have put themselves in a quandary, in a situation. Sometimes not just as parents, but spiritual parents. You got to lean in and say, I'll deal with that later. But right now, I got to make sure you're good. 
I got I got to step in and say, listen, let me embrace you. Let me let me let me let me hold you. Now, right now, I want to choke you because I can't. Uh -oh. Because I can't believe you did what you did. All of that. I can't believe what you did. But you got to be there for them. And that's what that's what God does. God is there for us. Now, we are deal with this reaping. We are deal with the reaping. That's why we have to. You're right. Guard your emotions. Prayer help you because it calms you down. And, and I believe, I believe, uh, Mother Fox, because we feel like we don't see the immediate results of prayer. But let me tell you something. As soon as you bend that knee, my God, you bend your knee and you bend your heart towards heaven. Healing is taking place. He's already working on the inside. Can I speak to y'all about even sometimes when, when the Holy Spirit leads you in the speaking of tongues? And not for everybody. Everybody don't pray in tongues. Everybody doesn't pray. I believe, and I know this to be true for me. I know that the Holy Spirit is making deposits in my spirit. I'm not just speaking in tongues because this role is taking upon because the organ is playing. That's not, that's not what's that about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even my hallelujahs. And my thank you, Jesus. The more those you get out, the more connects you get. Because I believe this, and I'm, oh, I was great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in between every hallelujah, the Holy Spirit is making deposits. Hallelujah. 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 And I believe the quicker those hallelujahs get behind one another, the quicker he's making deposits. Every time, hallelujah, it comes down. Every time I say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. That's when God is making those deposits. He's giving you insight. He's giving you wisdom. And you're going to meet up. I'm telling you right now, you, 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 you all of a sudden think the genius button was turned on. You all of a sudden, the, the genius button, he will give you what you need. He will give you witty ideas. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. In between every praise, when that left foot goes, that right foot, even though I can't lift it like I want to lift it, when I shuffle, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He sends strength. He says encouragement. Every time I say hallelujah, hit my soul. My soul is making a boast in him. My soul. And when you make a boast, it's like breathing in. Sister, Sister Greenwood, it's like when you breathe, you breathe out and you breathe in. Amen. Amen. And when you breathe in, I'm breathing in Jesus. I'm breathing in his word. I'm taking in all of that, mother. I'm finding strength. That's why when I pray, amen, sometimes we get stuck in the beginning. We trying to get our list. No, it's about connecting with God. Amen. And, and we want to we want to control the, the conversation. No, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. Amen. And sometimes it gets so strong that you don't even have words. Amen. All you can do is just rock. Sometimes you just stand there and you hold yourself and rock back and forth. Hallelujah. And you moan. And, and sometimes I know when you're moaning, it's like, Lord, mm, this is so good, God. It's like, I don't know what you're doing. And God is doing it. He's done it. He's done it. Amen. Because it's in salvation is an inside job. Amen. I may not look like I got myself together. And I may still have some flaws. Amen. But we, we're working on the inside. We're cleaning up. It's like you're in the middle of cleaning up. And somebody say, what you doing? I'm cleaning up. I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished. God is working some areas in my life and in my heart, amen, to draw me closer to him. He's drawing me closer to him, amen. So don't you be stingy with your hallelujahs. Don't you be stingy with your glory to God. You know, people are like, well, that's all they do is praise God. You know, I praise God because my praise is the only thing that's keeping me. My education can't keep me. My money ain't going to keep me. My friends can't really keep me. It's when I learn to reverence God and who God is, amen. But what I need, hallelujah, Mother Pat and Mother Johnson, mothers, I, I need you praying for one another. I need you praying for don't look at your don't look at them and say, I I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like the way you're moving. It's like can I pray for you? Can I pray with you? Amen. Can we touch and agree whatever it is that you're going through and you're experiencing right now, that God will be your strength. Between Sunday and today, amen, you probably went through a battle. Amen. My Monday started out real crazy. And, and, and I remember I was saying, yeah, Monday, it's Mo you could tell it's Monday. You know, I, had to, I re rebuked myself. I, I, I was trying to put my coffee in my mug that I got from Dunkin' Donuts, a mix of my concoction, and it spilled out and burnt my hand. Amen. This was yesterday. And then I put the thing in there because I guess I'm not paying attention because my hand's a little ball, you know, burning. And I put it in my backpack. And when I swung the backpack out, it wasn't a thing. It came off the lid. It was like the coffee spilled in the ground. And I said, I'm just going to go get some more coffee. I'm not going to say it's Monday. You put that into the atmosphere. We quit to speak sickness. We quit to speak defeat. 
but I need you to quit to speak victory over your life. Amen. Hallelujah. When you say I have the victory, hallelujah, that means I have the victory. Hallelujah. God seal it. I protect it. Cover it. Amen. You know, it, 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 you know, I don't know how you live in your house, but you put something in the refrigerator, cover it up. Cover it up. Because I'm preserving it. I'm saving it. Amen. I'm going to put some wax paper. What am I going to put on there? I'm going to, because I don't want this odor. I don't want to take on the taste of something else. Just like you put something in the freezer. If you don't pack it right, it tastes like the freezer. It tastes like the freezer. You can't taste like the world. Amen. You can't taste. You can't be defeated. We're going to walk through this valley of the shadow of death and we're not going to feel evil. They're making the choices, choices in the Supreme Court. They're making choices in Senate and in Congress. Amen. But that will not. It may have an impact. It may have an effect, but it's not going to stop me. We have to do what we have to do. We have to get and intercede on one another's behalf. We have to stand between life and death, between the porch and the pulpit. Stop talking about each other and pray for one another. Amen. Pray for one another. I may not understand. I may not agree. Listen, you got to understand as a pastor, as a spiritual leader, you get all of it. You get all of it. You hear it all. And I've said, people say, you, you're like, you're not, you're not affected by, I'm taking it in. I'm trying to process it. I'm not trying to finalize it. That's what you do when you judge it. You say, boom, that's what happened. You draw your own conclusion and you have no information. <laughs> you have a lack of, even the court, even the court say like, this is, this is insubmissible. You cannot submit this evidence. Amen. It's been tainted with, you know what tainted evidence is? She said that he said that she said that he said about you. That's tainted evidence, but you've got your mouth on me. You're talking about, you don't even have the fact. You don't even have a fact. You ain't even got a witness. Amen. What he, what, what he wants to witness to is the goodness of the Lord. He called, he called you to be a witness. Amen. Of the gospel, of his good news, of his delivering power. Amen. He said, I've given you power to be witness, not nosy. Y'all got more power to be nosy than to be witness of God. Amen. I, I love my brothers and sisters. And again, I'm going to meet you where you are. But I ain't standing with you. Now I meet you there. I meet you on the block. I meet you in the court, but I ain't hanging out there. I'm not going to hang out there for so long. And what I mean by that, I'm, I'm not, you listen, then you're like, you know, pastor, can you meet me at the bar? I may have to meet you at the bar, but we ain't staying. Let's go somewhere else. A brother asked me one time to have a meeting with him downtown. And I had a meet with him there before. And I ain't got a problem with any place, but this is just my truth. This is my truth. My atmosphere is important to me. Where I'm at is important when I'm processing. So myself and First Lady, sometimes when we have to make choices, decisions about ministry, about life and things like that, we go to like the National Harbor down in, 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 in Washington. And, and the reason we do that, or Georgetown, we go to Montclair. And I'm not being, I'm telling the truth. I go there because I need the atmosphere, how people are thinking. This is real talk. It's real talk. This is why you, you got, I make a, I, I try to at least every week or every two weeks, not be the smartest person in the world. I'm not saying I'm that bright, but my goal is I need to push myself higher. I'm looking at, we're doing a project right now and the project is a big project. So I had to go have conversations with, with people of influence that's been where I'm trying to go. I went to Chicago because I need to see what I saw. That's how we talked about the game. It wasn't just a game for me. It's like I'm watching and I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, now here's my thing. I'm not impressed by any of it. It's cool. That's all that's cool and all that. But there's a mindset. There's an emotion attached to everything that they do. Everything they do. Because if we're going to get these, these things that God has for his people, part of this mindset, because part of your mindset too is this. We can have a poor man's mentality. We can have a, we can have a low version of ourselves that we feel like we don't fit in. We still go to the back of the bus. We still sit in the back of the classroom. Listen, I was, I was, I was, I was always a little combination of Malcolm and, and Martin. They was a little bit of Mountain, Mount Martin, a little bit of Malcolm. You gotta know when to turn it on, when to say certain things, and how you say it. That was been all my life before I even knew who Christ was. You know, it's like I would not, I would not sit in the back of classrooms when I went to college. I would not. I didn't have no answers, but I'm not doing that. I'm not doing. I'm not gonna position myself of defeat. So you gotta, you gotta do that, and that's what allow part of me to not get stuck where I was because I could have got stuck where I was. Some people got stuck. Even when I got into church, I was like, mm, I, I, I don't see that. I don't, I, I think there's more to God than that. 
So you, you have to continue. You have to continue. You have to continue to strive in the things of God and pray for one another. Intercessor is just someone who stands in between. And all throughout the Bible, you always had someone that was interceding. That was interceding. And we know that Christ is the, the ultimate, the ultimate intercessor. He's the ultimate intercessor. Because what happens when you have a wonderful model of intercessory prayer, we talk about in Daniel, he had, it was response to the word. It was fervent. You know, you need somebody to go before the Lord in prayer. I thank God for our intercessory team. I thank God for our mothers because I know they're praying. Amen. Even as the enemy is coming, even as the enemy is fighting, and even sometimes you don't have the strength. Sometimes you get tired. This is why you have to be careful overextending yourself. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're overextending yourself. Now you're weak. And I say this to pastors and I say this to preachers. And don't y'all wear down y'all leaders. Don't wear them down. Don't wear them down. You're supposed to be there. You're supposed to be on the other side of the ledger. You're not a novice. You're not a novice. Amen. And don't you be having that parking lot ministry. Amen. After the meeting, after the meeting. Don't do that. Go home. Go home. He, y'all did the benediction. It's been sealed. Go home. Amen. Because that's where y'all get in trouble. Amen. So you have to pray for your leaders. Don't wear them out as much as you can. Keep their arms lifted. Amen. Because if your leaders, your leaders, your pastors are, are tired. And when they get tired, that lets down their guards. So you have to pray for them. Amen. Pray for one another. Don't take for granted. We have leaders that you don't even see up front. We have a lot of leaders you never see up front. They never grab a mic. But they're leading in different ways. They're leading in different ways. And I feel the prayers. I feel the presence. Amen. Because mentally and emotionally, you get caught out there. You get caught out there in your mind. So we got to really, really help people to be in order to confess. Because sometimes you're holding this stuff in your heart. These thoughts, these struggles. Y'all, are y'all listening this morning? Amen. You, you got these things in your heart. And, and you get strengthened by confession. And you can't confess to everyone. We know that. We don't, we know that, you know, and that's why I said, he said, she said, now you talking about people that started rumors about you. Take a good sip of coffee. Some of y'all start rumors about yourself. This was one of Bishop's Junior's opening of his meeting. You coming to him. I got to share something with you, Bishop. Uh, X, Y, and Z. It's one of the first things he asked you. One of the first things he asked you. How many people have you shared this way? How many people you have shared this way? And if you be honest, you tell you know why he says that? Because if you come to him and now you're sharing this with him, but you're sharing with two or three other people, what happens is when that gets out from your people, you're going to look like he's telling my business. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Again, you start bleeding and leaking because that's what it's called. Amen. And I know sometimes I need to get this on my chest, but be prayerful that somebody can pray for you. And it can't always be your yes buddies. It can't be your friends all the time. But you need the ones that are going to rebuke you, the ones that are going to correct you. Because rebuke and correction comes, it should come in love. It should come in love. And I know we have not always been great at that, Sister Norma, in the church. We have not been great at that. Amen. I was talking to a brother the other day. We were talking about when you mess up and they bring you before the church. Amen. And, and you know, we are talking about old school. That, that may not have been the best way to handle things because you're kind of embarrassing people. And, and I kind of get it. But we got we to love people through their mess. Cause all of us are mess. We all got issues. We got attitude problems. We impatient. We lazy. We got all those things going on in our life. We don't pray like we should. We always late to everything pertaining to God. Amen. You have a little jealousy, a little envy. Then you have some some things about you that you really don't like. Amen. Hey, my sore one, sister Jackie. Amen. Good to see. You. I mean, for real, for real. And and it's funny because even as we were celebrating Kobe. Celebrate Kobe's graduation. Listen, I love Kobe. I love, I love this young. I love him because he's such a fine young man. And, and the way he, he treats his grandparents, it's, it, I just love him. And, and we're there. And Sister Rose was there. And this is funny. This Sister Rose was there. I said, remember when y'all got in trouble for dancing at that wedding? She said, you are such a troublemaker. <laughs> but I said, we're not partying. We're celebrating. And we must understand that. That's why even on Sunday, and Sunday, people are like, it was first, these first ladies doing the, with a cha-cha hustle. Y'all help me out. But we were celebrating the moment. We were celebrating the event. We wasn't being carnal-minded. We wasn't being worldly. We wasn't being sinful. We were celebrating 
the coming together of two churches. We're celebrating, we're praising God in two languages. Amen, and then some other one. I was funny when I was up there because I had to really, really pace myself. I said, I said to myself, if I just go speaking in tongues, I don't know if he can interpret it. Somebody else, I need to interpret it. But, but, <laughs> but we have to learn how to celebrate the victory. We can't say, yay. No, no, no. With that Sunday was a celebration. Cha-cha slide. There you go. We, Sunday was a celebration of so many magnitudes. It was not just the event. It was so many other things. So we got to keep things in balance and in its perspective as well. Amen. And love God. But so we let's say as we get ready to close out, we just want us to really pray for each other. And on, on Thursday, I really have a video I want to show you guys with Sylvia uh, Glover. And it's really talking about an intercessor. And, and, and I want you guys to get this. And I, I'm on this because this is where the lesson is. This is where we are in our lesson. But in this this day, in this day, this is what we need. Uh, uh, there's, there's, I, I, I have to be honest. There's a lot of things, not just in the world, that got me kind of like, well, what, what, now I'm not so shocked with the world. There's movements even within the body of Christ. I don't quite understand it, right? I don't quite understand it. Maybe it's not meant for me to understand, but I need to pray about it. So when you lack an understanding of certain things, how someone's moving, if you, again, if you're not willing to approach that person about it, don't approach somebody else about it. You know, they say if our brothers and sisters are overtaken and fall, ye that are spiritual and you consider yourself, amen, because I'm quite sure when you come there, their issues may be she's pregnant, but you have not approached the father and you know who the father is. So sometimes our sins or our shortcomings are so obvious, but we don't go and, and deal with. So even when you come, you know, when no, come with no judgment. Come with because I love you. Come because I want to see you doing better. Amen. I can't see you go out. And you're going to have, you're going to have, <laughs> what's the word? Not multiple offenders. <laughs> you're going to have some people that, 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 that kind of, they get stuck there. They get stuck in certain patterns. They really, really do. They get stuck and, and come along. And I've seen, I've seen the deliverance power of God in, in the ministry. I've seen God bring someone from here to here. I've seen them fall flat on their face and mess up. I've seen it. And come on, let's get back. And again, grace is where you get your power. When you find the love of God and you find the power of God in grace, you'll realize, God, you love me in spite of myself. And you don't love me because you allow me to get away with anything. Amen. Now, that's not what it is. But you say, you know what? I see you and I still love you. So let's continue to pray for one another. Repeat offenders. That's the word we got of repeat offenders. And, and here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. And, I, and I'm going to close out. This is part for our, for our church as well. Um, be careful of the offenses. The things that offend you. They are repeat offenders. And this is for all of y'all. They are repeat offenders, right? But don't allow it to be an offense to you. And we talk about offenses in the Bible. It tells you, you know, you're offended by, why are you offended by? Why are you offended? Are you tired of them? Did somebody tired of you? Amen. Somebody tired of praying. Did we pray about that last week? But everybody's process is different. Sometimes, again, everything is not in the microwave. Everything don't go in the air fryer. There are some things that still need to be in the oven. There are some things that still need to be a slow process. And that may be my process. So let's pray for one another as we continue to walk with God. Amen. And it's our desire that you have a wonderful and blessed day. <laughs> Don't let repeat offenders be an offense to you. Amen. Do not, do not, do not, do not. Because now you and your feelings, and I said a while ago, and this deal with relationship, any type of relationship, amen, is that you're not responsible for their response. Amen. But please, please, if you can, we'll be at Garrett Mountain this Wednesday for Bible class. It's part of our pop-up Bible class series that we'll be having all Sunday, some sun, summer uh, as part of our summer surge. And we do this summer surge because during the summertime, we fall, have a tendency to fall off. So we do things a little bit different. Fun. We ask you to bring your bikes. If you want, bring your bike. If you have a bike, bring your bike. If you want to come, we have a Bibles and bikes. You can ride before, you can ride after, but we're going to be broadcasting from there, we will be on our Facebook page. Amen. We'll definitely be praying for you, Mother Johnson. We'll definitely be praying for you, praying for you guys. Amen. Um, but the pop-up Bible class this, this week is in Garrett Mount. We'll be in Hawthorne, Heldon, Clifton, and a couple of other places as well uh, to bring the word. Amen. 
Uh, maybe we'll make it down to the seniors building. Again, again, we got to still keep certain things, protocols in place because, you know, we deal with seniors and things like that. But it's our desire to get the gospel out to the world. Amen. So we're going to close on this next election and we will see you guys on Thursday. Be blessed in Jesus name. Amen.